how are the economics of the venture capital industry changing? Um, and in particular, like what are the changes, what, what structural changes are gonna happen in venture capital as a consequence of these economic changes? So first of all, I don't believe there is such a thing as the venture capital industry. Um, I don't think it exists. Um, I think you've got a set of firms, you've got 20, 30, 40 boutique venture capital firms that do really well over time, and then you've got about 660 firms that will generally very much break your heart as an investor if you invest in them. Um, they'll return you less than the stock market which, with much higher risk. Um, so venture capital is one of those things. Venture capital firms, hedge funds, buyout firms, uh, investment firms operating in sort of special markets that are illiquid or have special knowledge. You tend to have a few firms that generate all the returns, and then you tend to have a lot of people who want to generate those returns that can never actually figure out how to, how to, how to hurdle the bar. And so like, if you pull up, you see these, you can download this list online. If you pull up like venture capital firms in the US, it's like 700. And you'll read, you can read through that for like three hours. And like, you won't recognize the vast majority of the names on that list. And how they get funded, I don't have the first clue. Like, I, you know, it's the same thing with hedge funds. There's like 8,000 hedge funds. Like, it's just like, I, you don't even know who these people are. The problem is, it, when you talk about the venture capital industry, all that data gets rolled up. Um, and then they look at it and they say, well, venture capital is terrible because venture capital doesn't make any money. And it's like, well, yeah, if you include all the bad firms, it's terrible. Um, so there's really no, it, it's this really striking thing where it's, and, and, and entrepreneur, what's interesting is entrepreneurs know this. Um, and it's not like there's a shortage. There's, there's a bunch of good firms, but like entrepreneurs are well aware that there's a set of firms that know what they're doing and there's a set of firms that really don't. And so there's a whole adverse selection thing that kicks in. Um, so, um, so there's two ways of asking the question. One is what's going to happen to venture capital broadly. Um, and um, I almost spent like almost no time on, on that topic. Um, to me, the very interesting question is what's going to happen to the, the really good venture capital firms. Um, and I think there's a whole variety of things that are happening there. So one is um, there's this whole tier of sort of angel or seed funding. Um, because it's so much cheaper to start these companies, um, there's a whole tier of angel or seed funding that's now, that has now appeared and is, is becoming sort of very professionalized. Um, and in fact, a lot of the best angel investors are now starting actually raising funds. Um, and so for example, uh, Ronnie, my colleague Ronnie's father, Ron Conway, is uh, one of the really well-known Silicon Valley VCs. And he's just raised, uh, or angel investors, and he's just raised a new fund um, to, uh, you know, to, do, to, to even ramp up his activity. Um, and that's very exciting because the, the best angels are really good. And if anything, the best angels are at least as good or better than the, uh, than the, than the good VCs in a lot of cases. So, there's, so on the very early stage, that's very exciting on the one hand. On the other hand, there's this equally interesting phenomenon that's happening in later rounds. Um, and the, the classic case study there is this uh, Russian firm called DST um, that has become a major investor in both um, in companies like Facebook and Zynga and most recently Groupon. Um, and so um, you may have noticed in the last 10 years since my last appearance here uh, on April 7th, 2000, um, there are very few IPOs. Um, and so you've got, some of the, you've got companies like Facebook and Zynga and Groupon that are getting very successful uh, financially and getting very large, and they're not going public nearly as early as they used to. Um, and so there's this new category of investor um, that is coming in. And some of these are existing firms that are now getting larger, um, and some of these are new firms that are being created uh, that are coming in and are investing later and later um, in, um, in, in sort of the company life, uh, life cycle. Um, and some of these uh, firms are taking you know, ownership stakes of you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, 500, 600, 700 million of indiv indiv an individual ownership stake um, in, um, you know, in, a, in a sort of high growth company at a later stage.